Okay, I guess I better say it from the beginning here. I'm well aware that my audience isn't the People Magazine celebrity gossip crowd. When it comes to the personal lives of the rich and famous, most of you are uninquiring minds who don't want to know jack shit. You don't give a flying toss about the private lives of movie stars or rock legends, and you probably have a fair measure of contempt for the more opinionated among them. You don't care about Meryl Streep's straight-out-of-her-shop-worn-ass political opinions or what eco-warrior Leonardo DiCaprio has to say about global warming every time his private jet lands where the cameras are. When I look at the view counts on the videos I've done for TV star slash false accuser Polly Perrette, your general lack of interest could not be any more clear. And to be honest, I'm pretty proud of all this. I'm happy knowing that my material isn't of interest to the same crowd that devours everything they can on Brad and Angelina. That said, I'm still bothering to address the latest round of celebrity trash news regarding Janet Jackson, whose claim to fame is that she had a perversely bizarre brother with real talent. I know, I sound like a snob, but I have my reasons. In the middle of all this mainstream attention to otherwise unremarkable people, there's a greater lesson in the Janet Jackson divorce case that is worthy of bringing into my material. And that lesson is that hypergamy, misandry, and the male stupidity on which they thrive are the great unholy trinity of our times for men. Like a silent fart on a crowded elevator, they ooze a foulness that is hard to escape. But unlike that quiet, noxious flatulence, you know where it comes from if you've ever been in the same room with a red pill. In fact, there's not a place on the planet that you don't see this crap. It rears its fugly head in all racial, religious, and economic groups, and even in the super-rich. If you don't believe that, just ask Wassan Almana a man who was smart enough to amass a billion-dollar fortune in high-end businesses and dumb enough to marry a skeezer like Jackson. As you will see ahead, his male dumbness didn't end with his selection for a wife and the mother of his child. Their marriage, and now pending divorce, paints a perfect picture of the fact that you enter matrimony at your own risk. Even marrying an already affluent woman and getting a prenup won't protect you if you insist on being stupid. Legal pundits are already projecting a $200 million alimony windfall for Jackson, and I'll get to more on that in a bit, but first let's look at the weapons-grade gold digging employed by Jackson to set herself up for the money grab. Almana and Jackson married in 2012, employing a prenup that covered them for five years. About a year before the prenup expired, boom, Jackson gets pregnant. Two months after she had the baby and right after the prenup expired, it's Splitsville. And of course, right on the heels of her dumping her husband, Jackson hits the media with accusations that he's a control freak Muslim trying to coerce her into living the allegedly oppressive life that Muslim women live. Poor baby. Ah, uh, but I'm sure it's nothing that half of his billion-dollar empire won't help her overcome. Still, I want to take a minute to address what is likely going on here, minus all the you-go-girl spin that is already taking place in the media. First, and to be clear, I don't have anything against Janet Jackson. She's an entertainer. Nothing more. Nothing less. Nonetheless, her timing and her alleged facts around this case could not have been constructed and planned any better if it were done by a high-powered divorce attorney. Jackson marries a very wealthy businessman nine years her junior. She converts to Islam so she could marry him, which of course is a totally plausible scenario for someone whose entire adult life and career has been dedicated to putting herself at the center of a purely sexual public spectacle. And of course, that is what every Muslim man who insists on a devout, obedient Muslim wife looks for. 
an American pop star who defines pop by letting her tits pop out at a Super Bowl performance. So, they get a prenup that expires in five years, and of course, at four years, Jackson, at 50, gets pregnant. She then squirts out the kid, immediately puts her wedding ring in a drawer, link in the low bar, and quickly introduces the child to her attorneys. At the same time, she moves out of her shared living arrangements with Almana and back to her own residence, letting it go public that she is changing the locks, creating a threat narrative. Almana, just like any threatening, sinister husband wronged would do, makes a public proclamation of his undying love for her in what can only be considered a plea for her return. Now, I think you have to imagine what Jackson's attorneys experienced as they looked at the complete scenario here. A filthy rich Muslim husband already accused in the media of being oppressive. A damsel of a wife who is also the embodiment in many ways of Western women's sexual liberation. And she's a minority to boot. Never mind that her husband is a minority too, You see, he's one of the bad minorities. She's a good minority, and that will engender extra sympathy for her. I can just imagine the lawyers had to pardon themselves and go into the men's room for a quick jerk over this one. Two hundred million? My ass. She has a kid, and she has the pussy. The two hundred mil is just the alimony. She'll have half his money before it's over with. A cool half billion dollars, and the world will cheer her on. For fuck's sake, so will Almana. As the lawyers and courts drain off at least half his fortune, he will most likely continue to play the epitome of a Western-style beta cuck, pining for the return of the woman who just royally fucked him over in front of the entire world. His kid will grow up to hate his guts, maybe writing a book or two about how shitty his Muslim father was to his princess mother. And Almana, if he stays on his current path, will just continue to play the role of the rejected puppy sitting on the back porch in the rain, whimpering to be let in. And this is why I've said over and over again, and will be saying it till my dying breath, guys, don't ever, ever get married. But even more importantly than that, get the red pill mindset and live it every moment of your life. Wassan Almana is the perfect example of brilliance gone wrong. Sure, he did inherit his businesses from the father who founded them, but all indications are that he ran those companies with great competence, guided by an outstanding worth ethic, and he was wildly successful. He could have literally had any woman he wanted, perhaps even the kind of woman that would not abscond with his progeny and all his money. Not that he had any guarantee, but his possibilities were limitless. He could have lawyered up a lot better for the prenup. Not that that's any real assurance, but it might have helped. And he could have chosen a lot better than the pop star he jerked off to as a teenager, which is exactly what it appears like he did. And it is what so many men do. Let their jerk-off fantasies decide what women are and aren't trustworthy. Hell, he could have taken a lesson from Australian billionaire times five, James Packer. Packer was engaged to rich and famous singer Mariah Carey. But she could not wait for the wedding before she started spending his money like a drunk sailor. Well, he got wise to that and called it off. Carey worth $520 million herself, demanded $50 million bucks for the inconvenience of him breaking it off. I don't know if he had to pay, but even if he did, it would have been better than the $2.5 billion she certainly would have taken him for down the road. But Almana did not learn from men like Packer, nor do I suspect he will learn this stuff from any other man. Some men's stupidity with women knows no bounds and no bottom. Now, is Janet Jackson a player? I'd bet the farm on it. Not that it really matters. Carnival sideshow hustlers don't make shit without dopey marks to prey on. 
Wassam Almana was a mark from day one. He's still a mark, begging for the sideshow hustler to come back, bend him over, and screw him again. Ten to one, she could take him for the half billion, then come back in a year and score half of what's left. And he would probably write her another love letter, which would be used for another round with him as media laughing stock. That is the stupidity of men. And that is it for another talk from an ear from men. As always, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, please, by all means, sub to the channel if you like what I'm doing here. Give it a like, give it a share, pass it around, spread the word. And if you're so inclined, you can visit my Patreon page through the link in the low bar and dedicate a little spare chains for the efforts. Uh, with that, as always, hope you've enjoyed. We'll see you next time.